Welcome to our video review of the Billingham Hadley Small and the Billingham Hadley Pro camera bags. Okay, today we're doing the review of these two bags. Uh, this one is my bag, the Hadley Small, and this one is Andrew's, the Hadley Pro. As you can see, this one's a bit taller, it's a bit longer, all the things you'd expect from a slightly bigger bag. Uh, they're basically the same in features, both got two two pockets in the front with buttons to close them and also to expand them. The main difference is this one has got the handle and the handle makes it rigid across the top not just because of the handle but because it has uh, what feels like a metal bar running across the top here. Uh, it also has a document pouch in the back where the small doesn't, it's just the same bit of material going straight through there. The material in these bags are of course the fiber knight I think Billingham call it. It's basically a waterproof, uh, of course not submersible because of the bag design, but a um, waterproof, uh, sort of like a canvasy feeling material, but it, it's quite soft and pliable and nice and you can walk in the rain and not have any, any concerns. So how about we show what's in the bags and uh, you can get an idea of what fits in them. Alright, so we'll start off with the small and we'll see what we fit in it. So it's also got a pocket back here, it does fit an iPad uh, or some extra filters. So I fit the 20mm 1.7 by Panasonic. I have jammed in because I haven't resized the holes my M1 and the 12 to 40 that fits in one large compartment on its own. It's a tight fit because I used to fit the M5 in there. Uh, under a flap, 45 1.8, 14 2.5, under another flap, the 60mm 2.8. Now it's a good guide of the bag, but the width of it is pretty much the same as the 60mm uh, 2.8 macro or the 12 to 50 uh, kit lens off the AM5. Also got the flash for the AM5 and AM1. A FL 600R flash and a FL 300R flash in the bag. The only way I fit those in one of the side pockets is uh, this has got the flash stand fitted and I basically overlap them like that and uh, put the little flash in first and slide this one on top. So that is all the inside empty and so as you can see one big pocket down there. You get these little flaps um, which you can configure however you want and everything's velcroed in like all other camera bags probably see here that I'm sort of pushing the bag width to the max uh, and the velcro isn't quite uh, holding in place because I'm jamming in a bit of extra width but it works for me. Uh, one thing I did notice recently is I do have a tiny little bit of fraying on one of the bag separators but short of that the quality of the bags are quite nice. The inners are also held together by a little stud, same with both of the two bags and the inner comes out, revealing I shove things between the inner and the uh, actual bag. I have a OTG cable and card reader so I can plug my cards into my phone and two filter removers in case I get any jammed filters. You can also then, if you're carrying a bigger camera and lens, pull out the inner and put in just a say a full frame camera and a decent sized lens just in that section. The pockets they hold filters, flash stand, batteries, 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 SD card, food, batteries, filter holder, camera strap, lens pen, lens pen, lens pen, wipe cloth, uh, tripod plate, drugs, film canister slash coin holder, pocket knife, pen, and a SEMA 1, which I didn't realize was in there. So as you can see, even being the small, it does hold quite a bit. So we've unloaded the uh, Billingham 
Hadley Pro because it didn't have much stuff in it anyway. But I thought I'd show you the size comparison between the two inners because this is where you get what you fit in the bag. So you get a better idea on the sizing. So that's the small inner in comparison to the Pro. So quite a bit wider uh, and a little bit taller. Uh, so inside the bag, as I said, just got a little stud there. Nice little thing saying it's made by somebody Billingham. I can't remember who, who the uh, founder was, but they just slot in, clip in place. And the large, bigger side pockets, of course, fits basically up to my wrist. These buttons are really nice as well because they just keep everything, or well not everything. If you've got small stuff, it can fall out if the bag's shaking around, but uh, it does help to retain stuff in there. But that's the size comparison to the two. So as you can see, my Micro Four Thirds setup was quite tightly jam-packed in the, in the small. So I've got all the stuff that was inside the bag sitting next to me. Let's see how we go loading it up into the Pro. So start off with the 60 mil macro. Pop that in there. There's heaps of room in that pocket still. Put the uh, 45 and the 14 together. Put the 20 mil on top. Pop the EM1 and the 12 to 50 in the center. And we'll put the two flashes side by side, both at once, down into there. As you can see down there, there is heaps of room left in the bag. Uh, so, and these are, all these lenses are swimming in there and um, you could fit a lot more in there. Let's load it up with some other stuff and see what we can fit in. Radio, we have a Nikon D700 full frame camera, so about the same size as any full frame camera. Chuck that in there, it actually has a fair bit of room sitting above it. 70 to 200, 2.8. Goes in there, 60 mil macro, all full frame glass. Uh, 28 mil, 2.8 in there, and a 50 mil, 1.8 up the top and yet again still room uh, I couldn't really comfortably fit the camera in there because of a hump sitting in sideways but it fits in nicely that way so not great if you wanted to pull the camera straight out and start shooting with it but it does all fit and you could fit something else in there so if you're street shooting and don't want a big telephoto we can pull the 70 to 200 out and uh, fit a SB900 in its little bag in there or any flash out of its bag. So if you were shooting full frame, wanted a stylish street bag and uh, didn't mind the extra weight, it will all fit in a Billingham Pro. Uh, you can fit the camera and a 50mm, maybe another lens in the Billingham Small. This is the bag on. Uh, personally, I have a rather high strap. The uh, buckle comes up to about my shoulder on the adjusting slider. Um, I normally wear it in the small of my back about there and I can simply swing it around, grab stuff out of it. Also works as a bit of a shelf if you're doing a lens change. Uh, whilst I'm opening and closing it, the buckles are also really nice on the Billingham bags and you can adjust those to be tighter and looser. But uh, that's normally how I have it, how it looks on me. You can have it on your shoulder. It sits relatively well, but it does sort of get a bit slippy sometimes and it's just a bit more stable sitting sitting behind you. So that is the small, now with the magic of video editing. This is the Pro. Now, I'm not gonna mess up his camera strap uh, because this is how Andrew has his a bit longer, but that's it. In comparison to the size of me, of course, it fits on the side, um, around the back. Of course, you can still swing it forward, get to everything. This is a bit newer, so those uh, leather straps, they are actually leather. All the detailing is leather. Um, sitting behind me, 
sits quite fine. Um, it does feel to me personally, possibly just because of the length of it, it does feel a bit more rigid across the side of me, but it's probably just because what I'm used to. So that's both of them, how they look sitting on you. And uh, really, it's just a choice of what you think that you need to, to fit in it. Um, as I said before, if you've got a full frame camera, it's really between the Pro and Varies a Large, I do believe. Uh, but for any sort of mirrorless camera, either one of them would go. If I somebody stole my bag and I had to buy another one tomorrow, I would actually buy the Large. Uh, probably in the same colour that I have the small, just because I, I prefer it a bit more uh, than the black uh, and also with the brass fittings rather than the silver fittings, but that's a personal preference thing. They come in a couple of different colour combinations, but uh, they're great quality build feel great, look great, get a lot of compliments on them. But yeah, the only reason I'd get the Pro would just be, I've got a lot more micro four-third stuff than what I initially thought that I would have when I moved into that platform. But the good thing about having a small one, I just want to mention is they limit how much you can carry, which might sound like a con, but when you're used to carrying, I used to carry 20 kilos in my full frame bag, backpack. With the smaller bag, it not only limits how much you can carry, but the benefit of that is you can't actually carry too much weight so you don't get too tired walking all around all day with one of these which I do have a shoulder bag for my full frame set up and, and you end up sort of walking sideways by the end of the day so highly recommend uh, and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed this video showing the two bags